Paxton. I am the acting director at the South Central Climate Science Center, which is located at the University of Oklahoma in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, we are participating with folks at the World Wildlife Federation um, and a host of other organizations. You can see their logos in the bottom right-hand screen on the pretty picture of the Rio Grande there. Um, we are participating with them in um, offering a series of five uh, webinars that highlight the um, research that we have funded in the Red River over the past um, few years, two or three years. Uh, today is the first of this webinar series. This is on the economics of the Red River Basin by Jad Zilokowska and her um, postdoc collaborator, um, Jin Hong Mu, I think, if I pronounced that right. Um, in September, we have two of these um, webinars, one on the 12th and one on the 25th. The one on the 12th will be a presentation by Jack Freeman on stakeholder perspectives of the Red River. And I think that, I think that should be stakeholder perspectives of the Grande River. I think it's kind of there. Um, I, I tried way, to get a. Uh, by the way, if, you think, if, if you're it's not the like speaker, it. if you're not the speaker, would you please mute your phone? We're getting a lot of background. Seguro que sí. Alfredo, we can hear you. I think so. I want to wait. No, it's just Okay, again. I'm here. Big call. Okay, that's great, Alfredo. Please mute yeah, your phone. You type all day with that. Please mute your phone. If if your phone is not muted, it needs to be right now. <laughs> okay. On the 25th of September, we will have a presentation on Snowpack to the River Evaluation and Modeling by Dave Gutzler and David Klo. On the um, on October the 9th, we will have a presentation on Red River hydrology and ecology. That will be given by Jack Schmidt and Sam Sandoval Solis. And then finally, Jennifer Koch will give us a presentation on her work on systems modeling of the river basin, incorporating both hydrology and um, some of the social work that uh, Jack Friedman has done into a model, and that will be on October the 23rd. So I'm not going to waste any more time. If you need any more information about those presentations, for example, if you're just on the call on the um, telephone part and not on the WebEx and you need more information, you can send um, an email to either Sarah or myself, and we will be glad to send you that information. So now we are going to transfer the, um, the presentation mode over to uh, Jad Zilikowska. Jad is an assistant professor at the University of Oklahoma, and she has um, in the midst, she has early, she's in the midst of a project on the economics of the basin. Jad, take it away. Jad, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you. You might be on uh, mute. Sorry, I had to mute everyone um, because we're getting a lot of noise. Um, so I'm going to unmute um, Jad. So hopefully, he... can you hear me, Jad? I can hear you. Oh, excellent. Are you able to share your screen? Um, I, I, I don't know where to I don't know where to do it um, um, there um, if you go to quick start there um, 
there's a button in the middle and it says share screen, so um, just click right there. Perfect. Uh, but uh, let's see. But I don't have anything to share. You can only see me, I guess. I don't. So Jiang Kong is going to show presentation the presentation on her screen. Um, oh, okay. So I will say stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Right. And once Jiang Kong uh, takes over, she will share her screen. But I don't have anything to share. Uh, other oh. than the, I just okay. want to you know give the introduction as I speak. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay. That sounds good. I'll share my screen when um, once um, he joins. So you okay. Can, yeah. Please go ahead. <laughs> so now everyone can hear me. I, I can go ahead. Yes, you're coming through really well. Okay. Super. Yes. So let me start um, again because uh, you probably didn't hear me at all. Um, so uh, uh, our team is working on socioeconomic uh, evaluations uh, um, with uh, Jiang Kang Mo, who is who's a postdoctoral researcher, and she is going to show some of the preliminary results of our research. We also have uh, uh, master students working on this project. One of them uh, uh, has already uh, graduated. Uh, and we have a follow-up uh, student, Sri. I don't know if he's joining uh, today or not uh, because of uh, classes, uh, but we have a, a follow-up analysis on, on those uh, uh, socioeconomic issues as well that I will present at the forum uh, in um, um, November. So the main goal of our uh, project, our work on, uh, on the Rio Grande issues is to provide a socioeconomic evaluation of uh, um, water resources in the basin. Uh, and this is uh, part of the research that uh, the graduate students have been working on. And the second goal is to evaluate the willingness to pay for ecosystem services in the Rio Grande Basin. Uh, this is what Jiang Kong is going to uh, talk about today. And we also work on uh, uh, an ecological footprint analysis. Uh, um, and currently, we are um, almost done with getting a paper uh, ready for a publication. We'll be sharing it at a later time uh, with you all. Uh, so today, uh, Jiang Kong will present some selected results of uh, our uh, willingness to pay research. And I would like to mention that this research is based on a survey um, that we uh, conducted in the Rio Grande Basin. Uh, we still search for respondents uh, to this survey to increase the, the sample size. And we hope that um, those of you who are tuning in today, uh, if you haven't taken this survey yet, we hope you will be willing to do it. Uh, we will try to connect with you after this webinar uh, and get the survey, the link to you. If you could help us with distributing it to other um, people and stakeholders in the region and fill it out yourself, this would be very much appreciated. And with that, I'm going to um, give it over to Jiang Kong uh, and she will, um, she will uh, fill us all in. Thanks, Jared. Uh, hello, everyone. Can anyone hear you? Yes. Hello? Uh, yes, we hear you. Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, uh, Jared just gave a brief introduction of the research we are working on for the Rio Grande Basin. And the presentation I give here is the evaluation uh, for people's willingness to pay for water ecosystem service in this area. And uh, before moving ha ahead, I would like to show you uh, the location of the basin. I know uh, some of you may know better of the basin than me because I haven't visited the basin before. But for others who are not that familiar with this basin, I would like to show the location of this basin. And this basin is uh, across three states in the from Colorado uh, to New Mexico to uh, Texas. And for our research, we mainly focus on 
uh, the United States part of the basin. And uh, we want to focus on this study area because this basin provides important uh, ecosystem service for people uh, uh, located in this region as well as people outside of this region. For example, there are about 200 acres, 200,000 acres of irrigated agriculture are around this region, and this basin provides water and power um, for agricultural production industries as well as uh, local communities. And this region is also the home to Rio Grande Silver Minnow and the Southwestern Minnow Flycatcher, which is the federal endangered bird. And the other reason we want to do the research in the Rio Grande Basin is because this basin is facing some water-related issues. Because of the frequent drought occurred in the past uh, years, that will reduce the water runoff and underground recharge result in reduced water supply in this region. And also this region is facing an increased water demand from population growth as well as economic development. So the unbalanced water supply and demand issues in this region is an urgent, uh, uh, urgent problem. Uh, and we want to, uh, you know, by doing this research, we could find a possible way to resolve this problem. And uh, the, we use the economic method to do this because it is an economic problem based on the perspective that there's no economic incentives for people to conserve the ecosystem service because most of the ecosystem service, or I should say all of the ecosystem service, they are public goods and everybody can access or use it without any responsibility uh, or payment to um, conserve it. So if we could you know, find the value of this ecosystem service, then we could you know, provide the important information for policy making to conserve the local environmental resources that could be supported by the uh, ecosystem service to human beings. And from a uh, methodology perspective, this region, uh, previous studies on the, this region, they focus on different methods to evaluate uh, or to examine the ecosystem service for selected river bridge. For example, they have done studies on the upper or lower Rio Grande Basin, like the center uh, Central Bay Basin using a cost of transfer method, etc. And the problem is that it's very difficult for us to compare studies across different regions to get a consistent result that is provide useful information for policy making or policy uh, a policy um, uh, perspective. So our research, the objective is to as you're focusing on the entire Rio Grande region, uh, basin to determine the factors affecting people's perceptions as well as to evaluate people's willingness to pay for conserving the ecosystem service. And the most interesting thing is we expect that uh, different people, they have different preference for different types of uh, ecosystem service. Uh, and, uh, and that will affect, uh, and that will affect uh, their uh, behavior for the um, for their payment and for the payment value. And for this specific research, we focus on four types of ecosystem service: uh, freshwater supplies. Uh, cultural heritage, including hunting, plant uh, connecting, etc., wildlife habitat, and recreational activities such as fishing and rafting. And from this analysis, we try to find out the association between the factors affecting this payment behaviors, as well as those uh, individual perceptions and uh, uh, characteristics. So, to a to achieve this uh, research goal, we designed a survey, and uh, we include questions to know people's perceptions to ecosystem service. 
environmental uh, behaviors as well as their individual characteristics, including those age, uh, education level, income level, etc. And here for this slide, I just give you a, a sense of the question we uh, set up in the questionnaire to get uh, people's um, willingness to pay for the ecosystem survey. So in the survey, we ask uh, respondents, would you be willing to pay through an uh, annual donation to protect the real ground basin to continue providing uh, benefits to the society? There are two answers for them to choose, yes or no. And if they choose yes, we would ask the following. We would ask what is the maximum amount they would like to pay as a dollar per year? And if they choose no, we would ask a following question to know whether they would like to pay through an annual tax. And if they say yes, we would ask the uh, exact amount they would like to pay. We set up a question like this because we expect that different payment methods like through annual donation or through taxes would have a different on our payment perceptions as well as payment venues. And uh, this is uh, important because from a policy perspective, if we found that uh, there are different uh, preferences for the payment method, they could uh, make some uh, oriented, um, payment oriented uh, policy regarding this result. And to get a W2B for each category of the ecosystem service, we provide a table as I share in this slide for uh, the respondents to, uh, to select. So we listed four major uh, ecosystem services uh, that we are interested in this region and would ask uh, and ask of their distributions in percentage points for each of these um, ecosystem service. And just to give a simple example, if the respondent would like to pay ten dollars for the ecosystem service and uh, he ha he or she has a uh, order for this four ecosystem service from Habitat for wildlife, fresh water supply, recreational activities, and the last one is cultural heritage. Then he may distribute uh, the $10 as 40% for fresh water supply, 30% uh, for recreational, recreational activities, 20% for habitat for wildlife, and the rest 10% for cultural heritage. So in this way, we could calculate the specific WTP value for each, for each category of the ecosystems, and uh, that is uh, that this information could be used for our later statistical analysis. So we get the uh, data, survey data through the online survey to our quadrix. We send out the first call for our uh, respondents uh, in the early May uh, to potential 400 uh, contacts through email. And by the early of June, uh, we get 84 respondents. So uh, the response rate is 21%, and this is a, a very good response rate so far. And uh, we send out a second call for a response in the early of July. And uh, as I checked uh, before this presentation, right now we get 117 respond respondents. So we are getting a larger sample. And as yet, um, called, for <laughs> called for more re uh, participation for our survey, we you know, get more respondents to increase the sample uh, because that we are we rather will refine our results and tell a better story later on. But for this presentation, we focus on these 84 respondents. And among these 84, 81 respondents participated in the survey with 68 useful uh, surveys. I think it's useful because these 68 respondents, they complete the survey 100%. So if you, if if one of the respondents, they didn't 
complete the survey 100%, we couldn't use this information for our later analysis. So it's very important that for people to complete the survey 100%. And among these 68 useful surveys, five respondents would like to pay using annual tax. Although we are interested in, you know, to in examining the different payment method effects on the um, payment behavior or payment values. However, we only got five respondents, so we couldn't do this analysis right now. But later, with a larger sample size, we could extend uh, this analysis and could provide more information. Uh, okay, so for the following seven slides, I will give you some um, quantitative descriptions of the data we got from these 84 respondents. And for the graphs I show here or in the following slides, the axis indicates the number of respondents. So 70 means 70 uh, respondents participate in the survey. And the Y axis indicates the variable I will talk specifically. So for this graph, we we are interested in um, we are interested to know people's perceptions regarding the issue of the ecosystem service they think in this region, and we need to turn issues uh, from past uh, need, uh, past studies or literature review. So they are water quality, water availability, water allocation, water rights, recreational activity, and ecosystem conservation. So we see that most of the people, they think that um, the, the proper line water availability and uh, red and orange line water quality and conservation, ecosystem conservation are the most uh, important issues uh, of the ecosystem service in this region. And when we ask about people's perceptions regarding the importance of the ecosystems, as we defined uh, at the very beginning, freshwater supplies, uh, cultural heritage, habitat for wildlife, and recreational activities. And we found that we see that most people think that uh, freshwater supplies and habitat for wildlife are the most important ecosystem service provided in from the Rio Grande Basin. And uh, this uh, ecosystem service has been changed, and uh, the most reduced one is the fresh water supplies and followed by the habitats for wildlife. And most of people think this change is because of the uh, changes in water flow, uh, because most of people think that uh, water flow have a negative impact on the provision of the ecosystem service and the change in water flow is affected by uh, drought. So from this, we see the uh, logic from, uh, we see the reason, as I said at the very beginning, why we want to do this research for the Rangwandi Basin, because the drought impact that has uh, resulted in the reduced in provision of the ecosystem service. So how to change that? is an uh, important research question for us to investigate here. And we also asked uh, people's perceptions regarding their environmental behaviors, and we found that 70% uh, of the respondents, they are a member of association, and 80% of the respondents, they are involved in uh, community activities. And we expect that people involved in are more involved in uh, community activities or a member of the association. They know the situation or the issue of the ecosystem service in the basin well, and in that sense, they would like to pay more in the terms of donor revenue. We also ask about individuals' characteristics in the survey, and we see that most of the respondents, they have a higher education level, and a higher uh, household uh, income. And um, half 
more than half of the respondents, they are female and are residents living in the Rio Grande Basin with an average age around 50 years old with an uh, average family size two to three people. So based on this perception, they uh, have a total awareness to pay value to around $83 uh, per year from the annual income donation and based on their preference for the ecosystem service. Most of people would, uh, most of the uh, money they would like to pay is through the wildlife habitat with the $48 per year and followed by freshwater supplies is 38 or $39 per year and the next one is uh, cultural heritage about $8 per year. So based on this information, we, the following things we do is use a statistical me uh, method to examine the factors affecting uh, people's decision to participate, uh, to pay, and the amount of money to pay. So we use two statistical models here. And the first model is a binary model. And here the D is the respondent decisions of whether to support the conservation of ecosystem service a lot. So linking this uh, equation to the uh, WTV questions we designed in the survey, that means if the respondents se uh, select a yes, we would indicate a D as one and a zero otherwise. So we expect that the, that decision is also affected by some household characteristics, like the household income and the perceptions regarding uh, ecosystem service, et cetera, as I indica indicated Z in this uh, slide. And based on uh, the response to the decision to support the conservation of ecosystem service or, or not, the second, uh, the second regression here is to examine the impact, uh, the, the factors affecting uh, respondents' stated amount of uh, willingness to pay. And uh, why is, uh, why is the, um, if it's the stated value that, for example, the $10 or $20 for the ecosystem service and uh, we expect that this is affected by some household characteristics as well as individual characteristics as I discussed earlier, as I indicated X in this slide, and the alpha in the first statistical equation and beta in the second statistical equation are the parameters to be estimated. And those are also the numbers we are interested in the following tables. So this table gives um, the preliminary estimation results from the first model, and D indicates the probability that the people would like to uh, participate to, to conserve the ecosystem service. And those variables with these numbers with stars indicate those variables are sig statistically, sig statistically significant otherwise they are insignificant. And we see that educational level, age, income level, whether the respondent is Hispanic or resident uh, living in the Rio Grande Basin, they have a statistic impact on their probability to uh, pay or not. So to integrate these numbers in the table, I will use like age as an example like a, a one year increase in age would, in, would decrease the probability to pay by 4%. And you could apply this uh, interpretation rule to other variables as well. So the taking home message from this table is that people with high educational level, uh, younger uh, people are Hispanic and are resident in the Rio Grande Basin they have a higher probability to pay compared to people who have lower education level, uh, older, low, uh, and a lot Hispanic and lot resident. And uh, you could also see that for 
as a variable that the respondent having parents or grandparents uh, living in the Rwanda has a negative effect on the probability to pay. And we still didn't find a good explanation for this result. So we are accepting open minds from all of you. So if you know that um, probably have a better insight to explain this uh, results, we are, it's welcome to let us know. So I'm going to, uh, this is the uh, result from the second statistics model. Uh, sorry, I would like to get, because, uh, okay. So this is a big table and uh, has a lot of information um, to uh, present. But the first thing is we include the variables um, that are affecting uh, the probability to pay as well. And here we focus on the value of the awareness to pay for the total ecosystem service as well as for the uh, four specific category of the ecosystem from water supply recreational activities. And uh, here are three taking home message from this table. The first thing is we use different variables for each ecosystem value estimation. This is because we have a small sample with 68 useful surveys but we have a long list of interesting variables want to explain their payment uh, values. However, uh, if we want to make the model wrong, we have to select the most useful variables uh, for the regression, and we use a static method, uh, method to select the most useful variables for each uh, ecosystem payment evaluation and uh, that's why you see different variables uh, used in different uh, ecosystem service regression. And uh, the second, this result doesn't mean other variables are not import economically important. They are still important, but based on our current sample size, they are not useful, that useful to explain the results for the ecosystem payment. So we are not included them here. And the second uh, taking home message is we found that individual characteristics, for example, the education level, age, uh, Hispanic respond, uh, resident, they have the consistent uh, effect as we found in the previous table. And this suggests that people with a higher educational level, younger, who are Hispanic and uh, who are resident in the Rio Grande Basin, they would like to pay more value for each ecosystem service. And the third taking home message is that um, people who, who value, who know the issues uh, of the ecosystem service or the value of the ecosystem the most they would like to pay more. Uh, and from this regression results, we found that um, people who think that, uh, strongly agree that uh, the water flow and the water use have a negative impact on the ecosystem provision, they would like to pay more money to conserve the uh, 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 wildlife habitat or and if they value the importance of ecosystems more, they would like to pay a more amount of money for recreational activities. So based on these two tables, here are our results. And uh, we go to the conclusions. Uh, From our sample, we found that the mean WTP value uh, for ecosystem service is $83 per year, and this uh, and respondent and the people distribute this amount of money to different ecosystem service depending on their preference. And the conservation of, ecosystem, uh, of freshwater supplies and habitat for wildlife 
are the most two valuable ecosystem service in our analysis. And uh, this is consistent from their perception to their payment behaviors. And the people's willingness to pay is affected by their social economic as well as geographic characteristics as we found in the table one, and the amount of money people would delete for ecosystem service is affected by different factors and depending on different category of the ecosystem that they are in cared about. And uh, these results are based on the sample size of uh, 84 respondents, and we expect that a larger sample size will improve our statistic analysis so to do this, we will continue collecting survey data, and uh, we, would like, we are looking for your help to increase our sample size to include more, um, more people participated in our survey. And I have to say that uh, we compared our sample size to uh, the 2012 census data for this region, and we found that our region is not, is not that representative uh, in the sense of uh, educational level and income level because we have a higher education level and higher income. And in this way, we would like to include people or respondents who have a lower income level and lower uh, educational level that will be make our sample more representative for this uh, region. And we also will follow up with non-respondents to increase our response rate. And uh, once we have done this, we will refine our statistical analysis to tell a better story, to find more interesting uh, results from the analysis. And we will also compare our results with other WTP studies in the U.S. watershed region. And, um, and in that way, we could, um, we could more confident to, to share the story. And that is the end of my presentation. And thanks for funding from USCS and the support from the and if you have questions or comments, uh, please feel free to let us know. And with that, I will turn back to Jack. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, any questions for Jin Hong? Yes, this is Alfredo here from Chihuahua, Mexico. Hi, Alfredo. Hey, uh, very interesting results. I'm glad to you did this uh, work. It's great to know that people are willing to, you know, to donate some money on an annual basis for uh, the conservation of the of the, of the baby. <laughs> My only concern about uh, about the study is that most of these 71 people that respond on or send you an answer for this survey are uh, they are mo most of them are very related to different aspects of the Rio Grande Basin. Uh, that's my understanding, because you got this list of people uh, from all the work that we have done in the area. I remember to have received this, uh, you know, the necessity to send you who might you will answer uh, for your uh, survey, and I just send a lot of people, you know. But most of them, uh, at least in the Mexican of uh, the Mexican people that were surveyed, most of them are very high related to the uh, to the river. So they understand the problems and they deal with uh, this all these water issues. 
uh, on a daily basis. I don't know if you have considered to uh, make a survey uh, with random people, you know, uh, the leaves in the basin in order to get the, the much better sense of, of this image. Yes, that is a very good actually. So uh, for this type of honor survey, we depend on you know, our respondents from the availability of the email contact we can get. So as you indicate uh, in your question that we basically relied on you know, uh, the email list from associations or a group of people that are professional. So that's why you know, our sample is not uh, representative uh, to for this region. And as I said in uh, my presentation that we are looking for uh, your help to distribute our surveys to a broad audience, uh, including like local farmers or local people that who, you know, who have uh, access or who know the uh, Rio Grande Basin, but uh, uh, all they are not the uh, member or, or they are not that involved, uh, a member of association or not that involved in community activities. And in that sense, we could get a representative uh, sample and to get a, a more, you know, uh, meaningful results um, from our analysis. And uh, for the random, uh, sampling questions, uh, we tried our best to include more random people, more random respondents, but um, limited to the online survey and limited to the email contact list we could get. We actually looking for people's opinions for that could help us to, to you know, um, to fix this random sampling issues. So do you think my answer is, uh, uh, do you think my, uh, do you think i answer your question, Alfredo? Yes, thanks, it's okay. But if you, you know, if you have contact for, you know, local groups of people, that'd be great to help us to, to you know, um, make the sample more representative. Okay, thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Bye. So, Jin Hong, are you going to um, email out the link to the uh, survey to everyone that participates on this call so that they can forward it? Yes. Can we do uh, that? Yes, yes, definitely. I actually, in my email for uh, the link to the people, I I indicated that if they could distribute our surveys or links to, you know, the people they know, that would be that would be great and much appreciated. Yeah, definitely, we are looking for that, and that thank will you. help us too. Yeah, thank you. Other questions for Jin Hong? Yes, this is Fatima Luna from Narayan Institute in uh, Tucson. And I'm curious to know how you chose your explanatory variables and if you have considered um, using different variables in order to increase the R square and better explain the variability in the uh, response data around its mean. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, yeah. That is a very technical question, yeah. So basically, because we have only 68 useful surveys, but we have a bunch of variables we are very interested. And um, but uh, as I said, to make the model run, we need enough um, sample size to make every variable, uh, you know, to get a, a result for every variable. So we use a statistical method called the lasso. That is the statistical method uh, to input, to select variables uh, just based on their, you know, improvement of the accuracy of the uh, estimation and prediction. 
So for each ecosystem payment, we run the uh, NASO technique and to select the most uh, useful uh, variables. And uh, in that way, you could increase your, your, R, uh, your, your R square after your estimation. Yeah, you could try uh, this method if you want to improve your R square in your estimation. I hope that helps. I'm sorry, what was the method? Um, what, no, what is so it called? L, L A S S O. It's a statistic method. It, it doesn't have any economic meaning for selecting those variables. It's just based on statistical uh, measurement. L A S S A L A S S O, not so. It's a statistical method. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Jad or Jin Hong, I have a question. Would it, sure. Is, yeah. there, is there any way or any plan for you to try to figure out the characteristics of the non-respondents? See how the non-respondents differ from the respondents, or is that just beyond <laughs> the scope of this? Uh, well, it is a, a difficult question, actually. Yeah, so right now, we we have the, you know, email list for everybody we can get. And um, and uh, we, we do not connect information. We couldn't connect information of those non-respondents because you know, we don't know who are non-respondent. So to answer your question, we couldn't get uh, the characteristics of those non-respondent. Sometimes uh, researchers will follow up with the non-respondents and not ask them to respond, but just try to get some of their characteristics is why I asked. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, sorry. I've been trying to speak and it hasn't been coming through. Uh, this is Dagmar Llewellyn in the Albuquerque Area Office of Reclamation. Um, I, I had a similar comment that I or question that I was uh, as Alfredo, um, and was um, interested to hear your answer to that. I'd, I'd also like to note that I think if the if the respondents included a much wider group than water resources professionals, who I think is mostly who responded to this. I know I got one and a number of people in my office um, got one and responded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I think that the, the, the response on the value of the cultural heritage and the value would go up considerably. I think that the people that you're, you're um, surveying are biased towards those who work in endangered species compliance and um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, approaches to getting environmental flows into the river, those kinds of things. So that's where people are working. They say, sure, I'd give some money to try to make my job easier. But um, what what really stands out from living in this community is the is the importance of the cultural value of water, both from a Native American perspective and a traditional sort of rural Hispanic perspective, both have long traditions of of valuing water as part of their lifestyle, keeping the valley green, um, you know, maintaining some aspect of a of a of a rural uh, agrarian based culture, mm -hmm. and so that, yeah. that didn't come out at all in your results, and I think that's because of a bias in who who responded to the survey. Yeah, thank you very much for pointing out and provide uh, the inside information because yeah, we was um, we were suspecting that because of uh, most of our email contacts are from uh, people uh, from associations, so this will arrive measure results, and uh, we are actually you know trying to find ways to include uh, broader people for our survey. So, um, so do you have uh, you know suggestions to include those type of people that they are more interested in the, um, protection of the cultural heritage uh, in this region? That would be yeah. If you have well, I don't want to do. 
I don't want to suggest groups that would bias it in that direction either. I mean, I think that, um, you know, what, what's needed here is for, for somebody to do this who interacts with the community, who goes to community meeting on topics that don't have to do with water, for example, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. meets with the irrigation community, meets with the business community, meets with, meets with all, you know, groups that are focused on all sorts of aspects of life in this community and then get a sampling of each of them in order to get something that's, that's not biased, right? No, no, no. Yeah, I totally agree what you said, yeah. So, so that's why we are actually calling for um, people's help to, you know, enlarge our sample size to make it representative for each group of people, yeah. No, uh, so, so you're from OU, right? Yes. Um, and I, I think there's another, um, there's some other studies in the sort of sociological, water and sociology um, dimension coming out of there. And there's a, isn't there a woman in, um, in Santa Fe who's living here that might be able to, to help with that, who works on Jack's project? Is that right? I think it's, Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack, yeah, Jack is another group um, for the project we are working on. Yeah, they have a different perspective on the um, real ground study, yeah. Yeah, we are working together for the project. Okay, it, it just seems like that the person who's living here is the best one that could connect to a large variety of community groups and associations that we might be able to pass this survey out to to get a, a, a much more diverse set of responses. Mm -hmm. okay. But there's no one group that we could direct you to that wouldn't have a bias as well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Thank so you. It, it, I think it really takes immersion in this community to get at that kind of question. Yeah, yeah. Jed, Jed and I are, are working for a long time to, you know, to contact to different people, you know, from different groups that we could include it. We could include into our survey, and it is still work, we are still working on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good yeah. luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Others who have questions. Let us hear from you. I know Steve had a question. Um, can you hear us, um, Steve? Yes. Um, Steve? Steve, if you're talking, you might be on mute. Okay. Anybody I know else? I had to I had to unmute myself from my computer as well as my phone and so Steve maybe that's what you haven't done. There's a little icon that with the little mute thing on the right hand side of your screen when you're watching the WebEx. This is Scott Larry. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, this is very interesting. Um and it looks like it focused on individuals. I've been wondering about uh, focusing on communities and water districts, uh, people that supply water as a utility, and how willing they might be to um, pay for water conservation, what watershed conservation. Has, has, have you all thought about that? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, part of, yeah. In our survey design, we have questions to ask the um, People, where the people uh, are from. So, if they are working for the government, if they are tourists, or uh, if a resident, um, we could, you know, actually based on their um, their uh, type of uh, people to do the analysis to say, you know, whether uh, people working for the government they have different perspectives or different payment venue for the ecosystem service. Uh, however, under the under current stage, we couldn't do that because we have a small sample size. And as I said, if we increase the sample size, we can do that. Yeah. 
And definitely that is a very interesting, you know, topic to explore. Thank you. Other questions? I have a comment just to piggyback off of um, the last. Uh, this is John Miller up in Taos, uh, some of the northern watershed. Um, you know, I think I think what maybe the last person was mentioning has to do with these bigger collaboratives that are being formed. And so, you know, just for example, in Taos, we're working with uh, you know, the Rio Grande Water Fund and a number of different other, uh, I guess, collaborations you could say to prioritize. Um, a revitalization of the river, the watersheds in particular. And so it's through a number of different methods, uh, tree thinning in the, um, in the uplands to prevent you know, catastrophic fire, as well as working with our irrigation communities for uh, essentially more water, you know, get more water in the river, get more water in the acequias, and then uh, promote the watershed in that way. And so we've had a lot of luck just uh, you know, through that through that kind of structured organization of the collaborative to really get a lot of work done. And I'm sure you could use those resources to um, to get a more comprehensive survey result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Our uh in our survey we ask for the respondents uh, occupations. So if we could get, you know, more information to identify different clusters of people that working for different uh, groups that we could identify, you know, uh, the question you just said, yeah. And so, I mean, not to, not to go back and forth, but we, you know, for example, we work with a lot of Asakia commissions. And so these are, these are groups of traditional uh, farmers that have that have worked the land, you know, their families for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and yeah. so there's connections to those groups through these collaborative organizations, and so it's a it's just a way to maybe reach out in a more broad spectrum way to get to get that feedback from those disenfranchised populations that you might not hear from. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What? That a very good yeah, suggestion for us to reach out, yeah. What was the name of that collaborative organization, the Rio Grande what? So we're working up in Taos in the northern Rio Grande watershed, and the the, the group is called the Rio Grande Water Fund. Okay. And the Water Fund? The Water Fund, yeah. And the subgroup that works underneath it is the Taos Valley Watershed Coalition, and we work specifically on projects that would affect um, – you know, mainly catastrophic fire in the highlands. And so the, you know, trying to mitigate possible debris flows and um, kind of get the forest back to a more natural burn regime. Mm -hmm. And then we've also just launched a group called the, the Rio Fernando Revitalization Project. And that's working just within the kind of the sub uh, watershed boundary of the Rio Fernando here in Taos. Um, so it's, it's a collaborative model that's funded by private um, Typically, private private foundation investment, as well as um, you know, public funds through the Forest Service and uh, federal programs. Excellent. Okay, so, thanks. And may I ask that? Can I send out the email to you to ask for like um, more information after this presentation? I, I would love to to respond. Yeah, just shoot me an email. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, okay. Cool. I have a question um, uh, from Steve. He's not able to, um, we're not able to hear him, but he can hear us. Um, he's asking if the survey um, is only on the, in the U.S. and if it's in Spanish uh, as well. Uh, pardon me? He's asking um, was the survey um, only on the U.S. and if it's in Spanish. Oh, yeah, we... The survey is only in English, not Spanish. Yeah. Okay. And he also um, says that the data will change when they get um, when you get more participants. Um, so it would be interesting to see how it changes. Um, and then finally, the Rio Grande 
excuse me, the Rio Grande doesn't have that many droughts, but Mexico can release water to the Rio Grande. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Actually, uh, I think the 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 major findings from uh, the current uh, sample uh, sample we get, it would be consistent if we get a more you know larger sample. The major finding should be the um, you know uh, similar, no matter you know uh, uh, no matter how large a sample size is. But definitely you know for a larger sample size, we get a more interesting variables that will be that will be play a role. So yeah, we are we are also looking to update our results for using a larger sample size. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone who listened in and joined in on this call. My thanks especially to Sarah, to Jad, and Ji Hong for this excellent presentation and this good research. Um, remember, we have four more of these events or these webs, uh, webinars planned, and um, we will be sending out a list of all of the webinars very soon. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you on the next or hearing your voice on the next webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Mike. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.